Hey everyone and welcome to Already Cancelled, I'm Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Star Trek, the original series, season 2, episode 20, it is called Return to Tomorrow, full spoilers for the episode as always. I was worried early on in this one, I'm not going to lie. Oh? Well, they're in space and they get this message. Okay, and... and it's like, here, come here, do this. Oh, it's a godlike figure. Who has yeah. power? Who can stop the ship? Who can stop them? You know, taking down red shirts, which yeah, literally yeah. probably saved those red shirt slaves because whenever they go anywhere, they die. That's just the Star Trek. Uh, fact. Yeah, they, they, they were being considerate. Yeah, uh, but I'm like, oh, here we go, another godlike power episode. Which they aren't all terrible, but it's just like, okay, we've done this a hundred million times at this point, and mm. like, okay, I see. Luckily, it did actually kind of become a more interesting episode because it wasn't the yeah, same old thing. Different. It wasn't the same old thing. It was about these three beings who are these old, old people, or whatever species they were. They used to have physical bodies, but their their civilization was ravaged with war 600,000 years ago. They all died, but they've evolved, and they're, they're now just, their their main... Con- consciousness is in, in orbs. glowing orbs. Yes. Yeah. And basically they want help. They want to like, take over, because uh, the main one, Sargon, who calls them here, he takes over Kirk's body, because inside... And he's like, we need your bodies for a little while. We want to build our new mechanical bodies so we can sort of be be alive again and, you know, have some actual interaction with the world again. Uh, but there's some risks, you know, Kirk starts to overheat. He starts sweating. Like he's, he's pulse, his blood pressure, all that stuff starts going up. And uh, clearly, you can only do this in short bursts, otherwise the host body will uh, just die. Won't be able to yeah, take it. Yeah, won't be taken. And they want to do this. They want to take uh, his body, they want to take Spock's body, and they want to take... The Mulhall, uh, random crew member who we've never seen before. But of course, it's an attractive always lady, won. so Kirk's going to kiss her by the end of the episode. I'm sure of it. Pause yeah, it always happens, doesn't it? Even if it's not really him, it's him. So, they want to take over their bodies and then use their bodies to build their, their tech, because they're the only ones who can build their tech, because you know, it's just so advanced, no one else on the, the Enterprise will be able to do it, not even, not even Scotty. So, mm. okay, fine. So that, that's, the, that's the proposal. And McCoy's against this. He's this is dangerous. Who knows what their intentions are? This could kill you. As a doctor, I'm saying don't do this. It's too risky. And they're all sitting around in the uh, the conference room, and they they and they, they basically give arguments for and against and the fascination. And uh, Mulhall is a scientist. Like, oh, I get to research. I miss it. to experience this and have the potential to discover new things because of this. And Kirk's basically an explorer at heart where he kind of convinces, he's, he has this great speech about how nothing ever advances if you don't take risks. Like, you know, you know everything that's ever happened in, in our history of, of humanity, nothing would ever have went anywhere had we not taken risks. And, you know, the music, the main theme comes in a little bit under it, nice little subtle version. Uh, it's a very kind of inspirational moment. Uh, mm. Of course, I'm like, okay, I'm waiting for the uh, the, 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 the other shoot to drop and get who, what the villainous part of it is. Even if even if Sargon's a good guy, I'm sure one of the other two aren't going to be that pleasant. Yeah, um, we've got to we've got to have conflict somewhere. We do, uh, but even already this got a lot more interested than most of these godlike power episodes because it was them asking for help, and our crew actually had the choice <laughs> of whether to actually interact with them and help mm. them or not. Um, and I, I like this scene. This is this was the first scene. I mean, I didn't hate everything up until now, but this was the scene of the episode where I went, okay, this is interesting. I, I like what they're it's, doing here. It's different to because immediately that's different to the usual godlike power where it's like, ah, oh, we're godlike powers. We'll do what we want. Yeah. And this is no, 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 no. We're we're, we're talking to you. We consider it. Yeah. You want to do? We we want you to do this, but we're not going to make you do it. This is this is up to you still. Yeah, the, 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 you, you get the feeling that once upon a time they were the uh, the Enterprise. They were the Federation. Yeah, they even speak about that. They talk about how you know they used to go around and colonize the the galaxy, and yeah, you know, that that humanity might be a descendant of their species. Yeah, all the alien species. One of them might be. All of them might be. None of them might be. Like, but you know, it yeah. could be. And he, yeah, even just the idea though, that he like Sargon wants them to choose. Like he won't. It, that feels very Federation. Feels very Prime Directive. No, we're not going to interfere against your will. But you know, mm. we're asking you to help us by letting us do this. Uh, and it becomes this thing. And obviously, there's some drama of like, oh, the boys are overheating, so we have to give them this fancy drug that we know how to create that sort of makes it last a bit longer, so we can bend the bodies for a few hours and whatnot. Mm. Spock's body, of course, naturally is is more immune. It works better for longer. It's a stronger body. We've established that many times. Yeah. Uh, and there's some things in here about the uh, what's the name? 
uh, Henock, who goes into Spock's body, you know, he's immediately flirting with Nurse Chapel, which, again, really fun because Nurse Chapel, we've seen a couple of times now through a few episodes that she actually has feelings for Spock, but we've hinted at that o- over and over. So mm-hmm. having Smock sit up and smile and like compliment her on her appearance, it's like, oh, that's supposed to be a really weird moment for her. Because Absolutely. he's being affectionate, which is very on Spock. I mean, there's a lot of smiling. Like, Leonard Nimoy's smiling all over the place in this episode. Strange, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, oh, this is bizarre. Spock, Spock's showing emotion. I don't know if I like yes, this. I, I, don't, I, I, I know I don't like this. <laughs> but no, so that stuff was, that stuff was really interesting. Uh, but of, of course they have to play it like where he's this villainous guy. He wants to keep the bodies. He wants to actually be able to feel things. He wants to actually have flesh and have tactile kind of, you know, expression. Yes. And he, he tries to convince you. He basically is a little sort of... Uh, he's a little snake, he sort of corrupts, he tries to convince uh, Thalassa, the, the, the woman who's went into uh, Mulhall. <laughs> Mulhall, Mulhall's body. Like, so he's kind of like you know, speaking in her ear, whispering in there and be like, hey, wouldn't it be nice if we could have these bodies and feel each other and do this and do that? Um, and of course, he's devised a plan to actually give Kirk the wrong serum so that his body, along with Sargon, will die and it'll be him and her left. So he's like really playing the uh, the evil game here. Uh, so, all this is super fun, and like, they've got all this speculation, like McCoy's trying to figure out what's wrong with Kirk, and I think the, the real fun stuff is where it, it keeps like dancing and presenting itself new issues and new problems, because then it's like, oh, Kirk's bo- body's dead, but his mind is still in that orb, and then we kind of solve that, we get Kirk back in his body, but then Spock's orb's destroyed, and it's like, oh, is Spock gone then? Like, are we left with just his body yeah, yeah. with uh, Henock in it? And yeah, it's just these questions where I'm like, okay, I know they've got to answer these, but I honestly don't know how. And that, this leads to maybe my biggest problem with the episode is oh, ultimately God. it's it's it is just ultimately godlike power. Ah, never mind about that. <laughs> yeah, well, they explain how they trick him by the end of the they episode. They do they do that, but just you know the, the I mean, even with Kirk in general was just okay. It's fine. Yeah, with Kirk it's a little bit. Washy washy. Uh, I do actually kind of like the the uh, Sargon's into the ship. He becomes the voice of the ship. The ship is his body for a little bit uh, yeah. towards the end of the episode. And I I was like, man, I almost wish they had the balls to just keep him, like, and actually have the ship have a voice for the rest of the show. It is that'd be cool. And I'm just I just happened to glance over at the wiki page. Did did you know who voiced Sargon? I didn't. I did not. Who, who oh, it? it was it was the the guy who plays Sky. Oh really? Yeah. Oh. Huh. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, well, could have kept him around. We got we got him around anyway. You got got, got him there. Uh, it reminds me a lot of the episode of uh, Firefly, uh, which of course related to the hit television show, but for the vampires. There we so go. Same creator, just been, but did a very similar thing where you where you felt like the the ship had a voice for an episode, and you almost thought, are they going to do this? Are they going to go through with this and just mm. have the sh- you know have Serenity have a voice and have a character? But uh, no. so it kind of reminded me of that a little bit. Where I'm like, oh. I wouldn't mind if the ship had a voice, actually. No, I'd be down for it. Go for it. Yeah, especially a little, little helping hand. Especially one who used to be a person, so it's not an AI. It's actually like a, a someone with feelings and who cares about the crew and cares about what's going on. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it'd be an interesting thing. Uh, which is not completely they didn't do that. I'm just that's just nice. Oh, to I get why they didn't, but oh, theorize and, yeah, and fantasize and oh, maybe yeah. you know what if kind of thing. It's fun, it's funny to do that sometimes. Uh, but yeah, so so the trick. Uh, in Nurse Chapel, like Spock's consciousness is actually before the the orbs were destroyed, it was put inside her, yeah. and the, she she like believes and uh, even McCoy believes that they're going to kill Spock to get rid of Enoch because or sorry Henock, because uh, he's going to take over the ship, kill everyone, and go off and do things. Yeah, you're smirking because Enoch was a character in Shield. There's a reason why yeah, I made I that am. mistake. Yeah, it's, on, it's on your brain. I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 I didn't mention it, but I thought, okay, I, I get what you, where you slipped there. I, I saw the sly smile, though. I, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm acknowledging it. So, a little trick where she, she's going to like inject a uh, guy under you know Henrik's behalf, and she turns and injects him instead. And t- he escapes uh, Spock's body because he thinks he's going to die. But it turns out the serum was not, uh, you know, was, wasn't... Uh, yeah, enough lethal. to make him unconscious, but that's yeah. it. But they had to believe it because he can read minds. So and so he escaped and then they destroy his consciousness. And that's it is. Um, what I liked about this stuff, though, I liked the whole, again, the Nurse Chapel-Spock relationship afterwards. When Spock wakes up and she's like, yes, we shared a conscience. We were very close. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, man, she's loving this. Like they, yeah. they, were, they were bonded in a way that most people will never feel. And Sp- Spock's like, now going, nothing happened. It's fine. <laughs> 
Oh man, I I don't I don't know if the show ever actually does anything with this relationship beyond just these little moments of her having a crush on him. But like I kind of I hope there's an episode where they kind of address it and he has to actually kind of acknowledge yeah. it and respond to it in some way, even if it's not like a oh yeah let's date kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, of course, because it's kind of fun, isn't it? Yeah, it's fun. I like it. So I like that, and I, I did actually like this the sweet moment of uh, oh we're just going to like let ourselves die because we, we've realised that our time is up. But Sargon and Thalassa, like, can we just have one request? Can we go use your bodies one last time just to say goodbye? Uh, so we get the kiss, of course, and they they leave the bodies mid kiss, and like, you know, Kirk and this one are just looking at each other like, uh, uh, as you were, uh, Lieutenant. Yes, 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 we will be very professional. Yeah, uh, but of course, of course, that's what was going to happen by the end of the episode. Uh, she, of course, had her whole thing where she actually did turn to the dark side for a little bit, and she was hurting McCoy, and then she like, realised, no, this is evil. Why am I doing this? Yeah, <laughs> and diverted yeah. back. So, uh, no, I, I actually like this episode. Oh, and I like quite a bit as well. Because like, I say, I, I get why uh, at the start. I'm going, oh God, here we go. But no, it does some interesting things. And it has fun with its idea as well. It has fun with its idea, and I, I like some of the questions it brings up because it brings up the idea of, uh, you know, consciousness, uh, physical pleasure, and then just having like a like because the the whole idea, the desire here for Henok is that no, he he needs to feel the physical sensation. It's not enough to have a robot body; he wants to feel things. Yeah. And the idea of transferring consciousness and sharing consciousness. There's a lot of interesting things that come up in this episode that. I, I wasn't expecting when we started with oh godlike voice calling them to yeah, to planet yeah, yeah. or whatever. They they're usually so generic, and this this was definitely not generic. No, like I say, actually, I, I think the most interesting part for me as on the whole though was them choosing to help them, like them actually having the choice and mm. then having that debate about whether or not we should help them, and deciding that the risk was worth it because you know yeah, Kirk, Kirk ultimately is like no, no no, these are people asking for help. It's kind of our duty to help. Yeah. Uh, so I like that. I like the core message of that. Um, of course, it can be uh, corrupted and manipulated uh, and abused, uh, which is what happens uh, from Henrik. Um But it's also the idea that these beings kind of accept by the end that no, we're kind, we're, we're trying to prolong our lives beyond what they're really supposed to be. We should really yeah, yeah. let this our, go. Our time's done. Yeah. So there's a little bit there of. Uh, I, I mean, I guess that's the, the core. If you're going to go to the moral of the episode, it's the idea that Henrik couldn't give up his life. Uh, and in doing so, the others realise that even though they're trying to a- avoid doing it so that it harms anyone, they're trying to do it in a way that it doesn't break any rules, mm. they're still kind of clinging to life when they should be letting go. Uh, and Hennick, you know, is the kind of the, the, the worst of it where he's just not letting go at all. He's willing to kill other people so that he can yeah. still, you know, keep going and be who he is. So, uh, so no, I like, I like all that. And like I say, I, I think Leonard Nemo might got to have some fun here. Uh, smelly and being evil and being sly and just just the, the way he enters one of the scenes where he's just leaning against the door he's just like leaning like, you never see yeah. Spock do that he's a really great actor and, and I think that one of the marks of like being a really good actor is you know being able to switch personality in what like in the middle of something else you know because it's just it jumps between them at times and it's, it's really fluid and, and he's just like okay no this is completely different person you, you you don't think oh this is Spock yeah honestly if I'm going to critique the episode it would probably be that I, I, I could almost see it being longer so that we could explore some of the ideas even more. Yeah. Because no, no, we, we go very quickly from, oh, what's, what's Kirk's mind's in there, but his body's dead. And then we go from that, oh, Spock's mind is gone, but his body's still there. Like, I feel like that's kind of almost been a two-parter and really like delved into the ideas. Oh, here. yeah, no, definitely. They, they kind of rush through some of the, the concepts, don't they? they? They almost, this is this is rare for an episode of Star Trek, but they almost have too much plot for the one episode. And yeah. I'm like, I could I could have done this would have been longer or you know two part or, or even just like an eighty minute episode or something like that just to flesh out some of these these ideas. No, definitely, I'd I'd have been down for that. Yeah, like, like I said, like my favorite scene was the, the decision making, the, the the debate, and McCoy being reluctant. Like I I'm like hell, you, you could have had the, the two part end with that decision, and I would have been okay with that if we had an entire episode debating the pros and cons of like taking this giant risk. Maybe maybe yeah. you'd make it a bit more risky from the outset if it's going to take a whole episode to do that but I just you know uh, that was the stuff that was fascinating to me um, but no oh, definitely uh, so I, 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 I yeah I'm pleasantly surprised after a, a, a sketchy start uh, mm. it's not even a sketchy start it's just I expected something from it because of how it was starting yeah it, it, it is the problem with expectations isn't it it's like well you can't help that but it's, it's, it's kind of the show's fault for setting that up but it's not this episode's fault 
it's not this episode's fault, but we've had so many of those that we you can't really blame is that we we kind of think of these things first. Yeah. Like like the next time we have another, you know, voice at the start that's doing this thing, I'm still gonna assume the worst, even oh, though yeah. this was really good. I'll t- I'll say this though I I I like these episodes like, I feel like this is one of the cheapest episodes they had to make, uh, this season, because other than the set where they find the orbs, it's all just on the ship. There's no alien visual effects or anything like that really. It's I mean there's the one thing where she's where uh, Talas is like sort of hurting McCoy and there's like a sort yeah, of a visual yeah, effect yeah. on the screen, but other than that, it's all on the ship. It's just the actors. the the most The most high tech thing going on is that when the other beings are inside their bodies, there's, there's like an echo effect on their voice and post. Yeah. That's like the most that's happening to sell as an idea, and it's, I like that. It's it, it's a nice effect actually because it's you're hearing both their voices. Hmm. Like you're hearing the the the, the actor of the, the the body and then the actor of the voice of the the alien at the same time. But obviously they didn't quite line up, so it's it has got this echo effect that you were you were mentioning. Yeah, yeah, it, I like it. it. It made it very clear who who was who, and they they couldn't yeah. trick us by like pretending it wasn't. Him. Yeah, yeah, we always knew which was which because that yeah. wasn't the point of the episode. Oh, of course not. Yeah, um, and I'm I'm sure we'll get an episode someday where there is like a infiltrator and he's pretending to be one of them or something. Of course, it's it's inevitable. That seems like a very Star Trek thing to do at some point, especially since we have like twenty plus seasons of Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. I'm... 100 percent positive it's happened which that is actually the scariest thing about just going through all these star trek shows is that we're already complaining about these godlike figures and these primitive race episodes and i'm like okay they're bad now in season two what, what what's it going to be like when we get to like voyager episode well, well this is my hope <laughs> my hope is you know okay so this is okay this is now of its time mm. it's it's very you know standard and um, as we move on maybe they do okay they realize okay no we can't just keep doing those we'll oh, have oh, sure. to do something different with them and that's maybe it. it'll become less of a problem no matter what i feel like with this many shows and this many seasons there's going to be episodes that are eerily similar to plots oh from yeah yeah previous course. episodes from you know even if it's not the same show like i'm sure there'll be a next gen episode where it'll feel like we get a repeat of that in voyager at some point oh yeah or something yeah, undoubtedly. Um, especially because they are ultimately the same type of show and they're dealing yeah. with the same ideas but hey uh so no so that's episode 20 which means we have six episodes left of season two and then we yeah. fire into season three. Oof. I know, I'm excited. I'm really, I'm, I'm, I don't know what I promised anything, but I really hope that when we hit the summer that we can maybe like speed through them a little bit quicker than one a week. Um, yeah, kind of depends on what we've got going on in the summer. It, it like, does, we yeah. Don't, we, we don't know what the schedule yet, of course. Yeah, we have no idea what the TV schedule is going to be like in the summer. If it's a bit quieter, I'm hoping we can speed through a few extras. Uh, just because I'm really excited to get to the movies and I'm really excited to get to next gen and start, because that's like, mostly unknown territory i've seen the movies of course i've seen a little bit of season one but i'm excited to like dive into picard and and uh mm. troy and uh all, all those other characters so uh but anyway, uh, so that's episode 20 of uh, star trek season two uh return to tomorrow so let us know what you think of this episode in the comments below like subscribe all that stuff get us on the twitters at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates if you want to support the show and the channel and everything we do here head over to patreon.com slash mail tv you can do that over there there'll be a link to that in the description as well some other useful links but otherwise that is us so thank you once again for watching keep watching tv guys uh, we'll see you next time <laughs>